Hello everyone, Strategy Taste here, and today we're finally back on Europonia Size 4 to continue the series of mistakes that noobs make, and this time it's Advanced Edition. So to make a little description of the content in this video, I'm going to give some tips on more advanced things than the last video, since the previous one was more for some very basic things, and today instead I will give you some advanced advices. So, let's get to the content itself right now. So, one of the first things I would like to inform you is something that in the game you will usually do, which is sign pistols. And well, many people don't know that in the piss screen there are a lot of things. There are a lot of things. First of all, the number of men that the enemy has and also is fleet here in total, which is something that noobs forget to look at. And if you go further, there's five more icons there which represent yeah, I'm in. There's five more icons, which represents admin points. Uh, yeah, admin points, prestige, aggressive expansion. Yeah, yeah, aggressive expansion, diplomat points, and overextension. So let's talk about these five things to explain some common mistakes, starting from prestige. So, so prestige is used. In a lot of things, such as fossil interactions, as you may see here, or uh, yeah, also estate interaction. It also provides various bonuses if high enough. While other extension, on the other end, is basically how much will the anchored land grave on your nation, and if over seventy percent. Yeah, seventy percent of the debuffs uh, will start to become huge and may screw up your entire campaign. Now, this is usually paired with uh, aggressive expansion, which is, in a few words, literally what it says. And if you go on the correction map, uh, on the collision map, which uh, uh, I think it's. Yeah, I have it. So if you go on the coalition map, every nation will have uh, uh, well, a point towards your aggressive expansion. And if over 50 points, you may get a coalition. If you are weak. Uh, yeah, if you are weak. And we, I will talk about that a little, little later. And finally, the second mistake that noobs make is about admin points and diplomat points. Well, boys, noobs, if you didn't know, yeah, something for you. In the pace screen deal, uh, well, making a signing a uh, peace deal will cost admin points and diplo points. Well, in general, monarch points, if I had to say. And uh, another thing, yeah, uh, well, first of all, for example, if you, if I will take Cornwall. I will, uh, since, uh, yeah, yeah, I will take prestige, which, uh, uh, if you ever end, you will get prestige, but it will cost uh, six deeper points. It will cost me to have, uh, between eight and one, well, one and eighteen aggressive expansions relations penalty with uh, 139 countries, which is, uh, about aggressive expansion, basically, aggressive expansion affects all of uh, the nations that are around you. But most importantly, if in a pace in the peace deal, if you attack, uh, for example, a Christian nation, well, if you attack a certain group or nation, well, basically, the uh, the result will be that. Uh, the same nations with, uh, well, the nations with the same religion, and uh, uh, also it increases if uh, with the same culture will increase uh, the aggressive expansion gain. So, if, for example, I will uh, be, I will be borrowing a 
Muslim nation here yeah, in Spain and if for example I would take this to provinces it wouldn't really affect uh, that nations overall because it's a different uh, religion group and it's also a different culture overall but, but if I would take uh, I don't know, Glamorgan, and walls exist, and it's uh, Christian as, uh, well, England, then I will get a lot more aggressive expansion in Wales. So, and that's a little thing. And also, about overextension and aggressive expansion, well, uh, basically, uh, when setting a piece, Deal. You should always look at overextension. Well, part of them, because uh, the first, uh, if it's really I, it really hurts your country. So I don't know if I can see. Uh, well, um, yeah. Well, overextension at between seventy-five percent and one hundred percent really hurts you. While the second, the aggressive expansion really hurts you in diplomatic matters because. Uh, it allows at 50 aggressive expansion points for nations to form coalitions. Well, what are coalitions? Well, it's normally a huge alliance that'll form between countries with 50 aggressive expansion points towards you and with enough strength they will attack you and in some cases maybe win. And even if it doesn't seem that coalitions uh, are really good, well, they are probably the main reasons why noobs lose their campaigns. Because uh, it, I can't really show you, but uh, a lot of if a lot of nations joins, well, it's basically game over for you. So keep a look at this screen. Keep a look. Uh, probably a lot more in these uh, two uh, things here. So. Now, as a final tip for wars, if you go on the diplomacy screen, you'll see rivals. I'm saying hey, on the diplomacy screen. So, you'll see rivals. And, uh, well, instead of pointing out random nations, if you're going to, a, to war with a specific nation, if you rival it, you'll get extra prestige and private projections as well as other options in the scene signed piece menu. So it's very useful. Even though I can't add uh, now rivals because I am at war. Well, actually, I am going to use the cheats to just finish off this war very quickly. So, yeah, bye bye. The Hundred Years War is finished, and now we have Aquitaine and Labeur. So, um, where, where was I? Yeah, now I can appoint rivals. So, so if I'm going to war with Castile, I want to confer rivals, and you, you will get all of these things here. So, uh, also, if you want a rival, you get the uh, minus thirty percent diplomatic point cost. Yeah, and also you can embargo them and other various things that you can look at there. And the same with Burgundy. So, it's very useful overall. And, well, so after you've seen your piece, you'll probably have new lands. With, in this case, uh, it's Aquitaine La Porte, and also Cornwall. So, well, there's a little trick for you. There's... Uh, uh, well, there's an easy way to avoid rebellions, or to have them faster, whatever you want. So there's the autonomy mechanic. So basically, you can increase autonomy to have less uh, stuff in general from the province, but decreasing unrest, or decrease to decrease it, to have more, but increasing the unrest. So, so basically, uh, it's probably a little bit confusing. So if you always decreasing the autonomy, well, um, no, fast since the minimum value is is seventy five percent, which in most cases is what you see. So there's the arrest. Arrest twelve point four is very high and will assert in the uh, yeah in the best for common. In some uh, yes, you will get our a rebellion if you are not going to manage it. 
So, here, yeah, if you increase it, look, over 10 points of unrest has been reduced. Even though you increase your autonomy, which, uh, as you can see, the current local autonomy has the following effect on Cornwall, which is all these various things, the unrest has uh, decreased, and now you'll see that, well, it's basically never going to occur. And also remember to make a call. And uh, as you can see, since we have a little bit of overextension, there's the mouse for overextension. So I recommend really be careful. And also, if you have a core on uh, a province and the, the culture is of the same uh, as yours, or is in general an cultural culture that is related to you in some way, you'll get. Um, Basically, you have uh, the core, so you're not going to need uh, to make it, and also you get, uh, well, new conquer, you probably won't have any rest. So that's another thing to see. And now that there's no more war, you get the option to stabilize your country rule, and maybe even get some events for stability. Well, stability is a very good thing, and you can increase it up to 3 levels in down and up for very good bonuses but did you know that the cost increases per level so as you can see there's here stability which uh, if you boost it yeah N right now it causes a uh, 101 of your current well stability so yeah i click it here and boom the cost increases by 50 points so basically, if you get, uh, well, that's the event, which is festivity, you get the option to get one stability or one pay tax in one of your random provinces. So you, instead of uh, just uh, wasting this opportunity, you can increase this further. You can increase your stability further. So, boom. And you can then get the stability. And boom! So basically, it's a very easy thing that you can do, but it's very useful. And it, if, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's at the second level, you get plus 100% uh, more stability cost modifier. So it's a very useful thing for you. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it you'll save up hundreds of element points in as a result. So now that you have a more stable rule, you could want to make monies and one way is to go. And you and if you have the DLC common sense, I want want to stop you from doing something that you don't want to do. So basically I am uh, not going to becomes Styria as well the commands and yeah as you can see Tyrol as uh, a gold mine so basically if you over a uh, diplomatic development option in a gold province instead of the normal tip there will be other red icon which says that there's a percentage for which the gold mine will get depleted well, so, yeah, if uh, I would like to improve lanes, as you can see, it's normal, but, no, that's it. Instead of a normal thing, there's also a red text. So, uh, basically, the red, well, from the red text, the noobs may be scared, but I'll tell you the downsides and upsides of developing the gold bronze. Well, starting from down, from the downs, the only real one is that in the developing, in the well, action of developing, you'll increase uh, the chances of the gold mine to deplete each year. But in the upside, there's the potential increase of making a lot, and when I say a lot, there's a lot more tackets, and this really is valuable in a game. And a special mention goes to Kosovo, yeah, which uh, if you have Robotania as a coal mine, 
which is a very good results late game. And also, I believe uh, it has a special event for it. So, if you have Robotania, that's cool, but that's also, yeah, cool. Yeah, and uh, as Ottomans or Hungary or whatever nations you want to get, I really suggest that you increase Kosovo. So now, with gold, you may want to wage another war. And in some cases, you need to use your own navy. Where well, here's some general tips for you. Did you know... Oh, uh, probably you return... Uh, yeah, probably you return France. So, did you know that... Oh, uh, well, yeah, probably use this. Uh, so, did you know that uh, using transports of a right cl Yeah, wait a moment. So, did you know that instead of uh, using transport and right-clicking the province which you want to get there, so, like, this way, there's another option, which is the embark option. So, let's now go, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Let's go, let's go, let's go to KN, and now you get the option, which uh, I think you get, yeah, you can get. So, attaching to transport, instead of uh, automatic transporting your troops uh, through the promise which you want to go through, it'll resort in uh, losing some manpower. And uh, instead of losing manpower, you can use the attached to transport, which is basically embark. And instead of losing manpower, you'll get no uh, debuffs. And uh, well, I uh, well I think that uh, also it's uh, faster, but I'm not sure about. So also another thing about navy. Did you know that in inland seas like the Mediterranean, galleys received bonuses to combat, and that's probably why some Venetians, some Venetians can destroy so easily your Spanish fat fleets uh, with uh, made of gallons. And now, and yeah, and after these, uh, which. Uh, Result in many uh, way to me also because uh, if you go to Spain, you probably want to go uh, with many gallons, and Venice uh, will also maybe your opponent. And uh, yeah, the Venetians can really, really destroy uh, gallons. But now let's talk more about your army. Well, did you know that if an army is taken damage, there's a little bonus which allows you to match your troops. So, yeah, I'm talking about the, uh, uh, yeah, consolidated regiments. Yeah, uh, since uh, in the battle, a full regiment is more effective than two with half each, with half manpower each, and be beat them both if on a fight, even if technically it's still the same amount of men, and guys, the same amount of men. So, if uh, you are going to attack here, so, let's do this little test. Boom. You want to attack. Boom. Here are rebels. Now we are studying to... God damn it. So this events. Oh no. Well, you see, regiments have men in them. And since they have men in them, if, for example, we are picking these two, these two regiments may be beaten by, if you have uh, three regiments, which you can consolidate, they will uh, transform into two, and even if uh, they will have the same amount of men, the two regiments which uh, have uh, 500 men each, so these two regiments, uh, and guys this one, may lose. So, boys, be careful about that. So this was a long one, but I hope that you now know all of this, these tricks to be better at this game. So I'm from Strategy Taste, it's all for today, and bye. And remember, don't be a noob anymore, destroy and remove the Ottomans. That's my only <laughs> advice anymore. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, well, bye to the next one.